Harry's Wife, Part 72.1, Finding Dollars. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor, and welcome to further analysis of Harry's Wife, the gift which continues to give, again and again and again, in terms of an opportunity to enable you to understand more about her behaviours, why she does as she does, what motivates those behaviours, what is behind the interaction between her and other people, to enable you to understand the dynamic, and in so doing, to give you a much deeper understanding of narcissism as a whole, by utilising this prominent individual. As usual, I utilise current news articles commenting upon recent events involving Harry's wife for the purposes of analysis. I leave it to you to determine the veracity of the content of these news articles. I provide you with the analysis. And first of all, we turn to the independent newspaper and its online version. Once upon a time, the independent was heralded as, oddly enough, an independent newspaper that focused upon serious issues. A newspaper that address the issues of the day, free as far as possible from political bias from the left or from the right. And yet now we see repeated articles that reference the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. The article is headlined UK Exclusive, Finding Freedom. Harry's wreath stayed in box and William furious over family drama. New epilogue claims. UK exclusive. New chapter in the Sussex's controversial biography claims Prince Harry was declined the chance to have a wreath laid at the Cenotaph. It is interesting to note that what was once a reasonably heavyweight newspaper, for those of you who are British will recognise this, has sunk to the depths of repeated comment upon the gruesome twosome. Of course, it demonstrates the pressure for revenue in terms of clicks, advertising revenue, and the fact that articles about Harry's wife and Harry remain those which attract various people in terms of observation, comment, wanting to see what they are doing, and of course, those that want to see the repeated hypocrisies and poor behaviour of these individuals. Now, of course, we know that Harry's wife and Harry paid Sunshine Sachs to push stories about them. And these regularly pop up in Harper's Bazaar, People, Vogue, Marie Claire, US Daily, Town and Country, US, uh, USA Today, and of course, Hello. And all of those are really just mouthpieces for the PR releases that are provided by Harry and his wife. But it is noteworthy that a newspaper that once had the quality of the Independent has fallen so far in leading articles about them. As I've explained previously, I find Harry's wife vapid and dull. However, she is such an excellent example and so many people are interested in her that one cannot turn down the opportunity to utilise her for the purposes of reaching more people in terms of understanding what narcissism is about. And there she'll, she provides a guilt-edged guilt opportunity to do so. However, this newspaper, like many others, just reports upon what has been going on, the latest um, instances, and fall prey to the self-absorbed behaviour, just reporting on it, without necessarily providing any particular meaningful analysis. And it's an interesting situation that shows the general dumbing down of what was a quality publication. Leaving that to one side, however, the article explains that the Duke and Duchess of Sussex might have been living across the pond for more than a year, but the couple have barely been out of the headlines since making the move. Don't we know it? It has provided me with almost daily fodder on which to comment and analyse. And of course, as we know, 
the purpose of the necessity of ensuring that there is this material that is pumped out on a near daily basis is all a part all part of the assertion of control by Harry's wife, driven by her underlying narcissism. The article continues. Whether it's their various legal battles over paparazzi images, assertion of control, criticisms over how they've handled family relationships, sense of entitlement to make those disclosures, lack of accountability for the behaviours, or that bombshell interview with Oprah Winfrey, a lot has happened to Harry and his wife in the past 12 months. Hence, a new epilogue has been included in the paperback release of Finding Dollars, I mean, Funding Freedom, no, sorry, Finding Freedom, and an authorised biography of the couple written by the improbably named David Scobie and Carolyn Durand. The legal team for Harry and his wife has said that Scobie and Durand do not speak for the couple, and the couple did not collaborate with the authors on the book, nor were they interviewed for it. Yeah, right. Quite simply, Scobie acts as a lieutenant or mouthpiece for Harry's wife, always commenting in terms that are favourable to her, in order to enable him to have access to information. Anybody that believes that there has been no collaboration between the two, quite simply, is ridiculously naive. Information is leaked, information is provided, and because it is known that Scobie will put forward these views in a good light. It occurs that he will be given access and information for these supposed exclusives. All that is happening is that there is the assertion of control by the provision of this information to Scobie and Durand that finds its way into finding freedom, which is an assertion of control by proxy, an indirect assertion of control over the readership by Harry's wife by leaking, providing supplying this information, which then receives a favourable gloss and is all done under the supposed auspices of it being unauthorised. There's no formal authorisation of it, but indeed, behind the scenes, it's very much the case that in tandem with the need to assert control, this information is being provided so that it finds a favourable outlet, which then allows the assertion of control over the readership more generally, the general public, and the drawing of fuel from that alongside, of course, residual benefits. So we've been treated joy upon joy that there's a new epilogue to this book. Now, I haven't read it, and nor am I going to. Indeed, if a copy were to find its way to Tudor Towers, it would most likely be utilised for the purposes of throwing at a minion when he was slow at polishing my various marksmanship trophies, or, quite possibly, to jam into the mouth of a minion when he is asking too many questions about how I would like my eggs in the morning. I'm not going to read this publication. I have no interest in doing so. Indeed, I will allow the various news organs to provide the snippets on which I will comment. We don't need an epilogue. But, of course, it's done. First of all, for Scobie Durant, it means money, but it also is being driven by the fact that this near perpetual necessity of the assertion of control means, here's some more information, update the buck. Here's some more information. It's not enough that Sunshine Sachs go into overdrive through the various publications that I have already mentioned. Oh, no. It's not a, the, simply the case that we see Harry's wife being mentioned either because the tabloids, etc., want to comment on upon her because of general interest and the fact that she pushes this agenda on a daily basis. It's not enough that that's already in the background. It's not enough that all you have to do is stick her name into Google and up come scores of articles, all current and new, recent and new, because there is this near daily diet of information and occurrences and in this particular part 72, you will find in a later section a completely ridiculous manifestation of this necessity of asserting control. But it's not enough that we have this forced down our throats on a daily basis, is it, listeners? Oh no. We have to have an updated epilogue. How wonderful. Well, what does this epilogue tell us? 
in the new epilogue, Scobie and Duran chart the Sussexes past year. Why? It's been played out before our very eyes and ears on a daily basis, but there we are. Examining everything from how the couple acquired their lavish nine-bedroom, 26,000 toileted home in Santa Barbara, California. They took out a mortgage to help cover the cost. Fuck me, what a revelation. Did you know that? Are you aware of that, viewers? Did you know that if you want to buy a property, you can get a thing called a mortgage to help cover the cost? Hmm, you don't have to buy it out, right? No, you don't have to save up for years and years and years and years and just as you're on your deathbed be able to say, oh look, I can now move out of rented accommodation and purchase somewhere. Oh, how wonderful. No, you can use a mortgage. What a revelation. Thank goodness that Scobie and Durand have found this nugget of information for us. I would not have been able to sleep. And I sleep as if I'm dead. So could you imagine now that if I hadn't been able to access this information about them having a mortgage to cover the cost, how desperate my life would be? Aren't you so lucky? These are the things that need to be provided to us, aren't they? These are the fundamental necessities of information that should be driven our way. Notwithstanding the fact that there is this world where, at this moment, people are being advised not to go to the airport at Kabul in Afghanistan because of a risk of a terrorist attack, notwithstanding the fact that there is a pandemic, pandemic rather, that continues to rage around the world and it's all its various related impacts, there's the consequences of Brexit being felt in Europe and the United Kingdom. There's the fact of a lack of access to vaccines by certain countries. The fact that there are ongoing issues surrounding Gaza. There are disruptions to the supply chain for goods and services as a consequence of what has happened with Covid and, of course, the blockage of the Suez Canal and the impact upon costs thereafter. No, all of these things fall by the wayside because we need to know these little nuggets of wisdom about the way that two out-of-touch individuals, one a narcissist, one not, purchased their house. The article continues. The authors also look at the reports that surrounded Remembrance Sunday in 2020, when it was claimed that Prince Harry had been refused the opportunity to have a wreath laid on his behalf at the Cenotaph. Harry had spent 10 years in the military, but gave up his military posts, including his role as Captain General of the Royal Marines, when he relocated to California and stepped down from his role in the royal family. In Finding Freedom, the authors claim that a red poppy wreath had been ordered for Prince Harry with the Royal British Legion. But as the day came and went, Harry's gesture remained in its box at the charity's headquarters in Kent. Oh, how many other people had wished that Harry's wife's wreath had remained in its box, although she wouldn't let that happen with repeated odious self-publicising and self-promoting references to her wreath and where it came from. It was explained that it remained in a box at the charity's headquarters in Kent. But Scobie and Duran go on to allege that Harry's request was denied because he was no longer a frontline royal, with a close source to the Duke adding that he was saddened and disappointed by the decision. The source added 10 years of service and a lifetime commitment to the military community and this is how it's been acknowledged by his family. Well, there may have been, of course, other reasons why it was kept in its box, but assuming this revelation is correct, Prince Harry needs to understand, you made a choice. You made a choice to follow, admittedly on your leash, across the Atlantic with your wife, and to step away from a family that you have roundly trashed since. Is it any wonder that you would not be allowed to place a wreath because you were no longer holding that position as a frontline royal. You're either in or you're out, matey boy. And that's how it works. You chose to be out, and therefore you can't be in when it suits you. But of course, driven by your own wife's example and the reduction of your emotional empathy as a consequence of the external stressor that he repeatedly experiences through his sustained devaluation, that causes him to believe that his wreath should have been included, results in him making poor decisions, causes him to see things in an alternative fashion. 
This is hardly a revelation. Is it something that's newsworthy? Well, the Independent and, indeed, numerous other newspapers have reported in similar terms. The Telegraph, the Daily Mail, the Daily Express, and that's just within the United Kingdom. So they deem it newsworthy. But ultimately, it's not. As I just made the comparison to other more serious matters around the world, an update. Not a new bug, just an update to an existing one written by the lieutenant of Harry's wife, which is a self-serving promotional vehicle for getting across her point of view, albeit under the auspices of being unauthorised, is not something that is of major consequence. It goes to show, of course, the desperation to assert control. It goes to demonstrate the continued sense of self-entitlement that is necessitated by the narcissism in action. And, of course, it also demonstrates the consequential impact upon Prince Harry, leading him to be saddened and disappointed by a particular decision. But he wouldn't have been saddened and disappointed if he hadn't gone running as the ginger poodle across the Atlantic with his wife. But, of course, he had little choice in the matter. Controlled by her and blinded by his own emotional thinking, he followed. And therefore, as a consequence of doing so, that meant that he's now suffering these collateral consequences of her behaviour. Indeed, he's viewed as much changed, and this is something that we'll be addressing in a later section of Part 72. So this is the way that the Independent opens, but there's more information with regard to this apparently groundbreaking epilogue that's been provided. And therefore, join me in Part 72.2 as we look at further aspect of this epilogue. <laughs>